as their own. Gloria, um, uh, De Venecia did this for Gloria in 1998, and Gloria didn't do this for Chador in 2010. Was there any basis for um, some who had concluded that her candidate, that she had really backed uh, Senator Villar? Was there basis for saying that? I, I don't think so. Um, if Gloria would would maybe Gloria was wouldn't be antagonistic towards Villar or probably towards Arab or towards Noy Noy. Um, I think she would she would be friendly with any candidate who would say um, they wouldn't pursue her when they they win. It's not really like an official mm -hmm. secret mm -hmm. um, team, uh, collaboration. Of course, Gigi, all of this is happening, all of this has happened and is happening against the backdrop of talk that President Arroyo, in one form or another, does not intend to leave quietly from the stage. Your assessments of uh, all of these um, fears? Um, I think Gloria is, is the one who can pull a surprise anytime. You don't know how, how she thinks. Remember that in December 2003, um, all, all of us believed that she wouldn't be running for president. And when the opposition put their guard down, she just announced that she was running. And mm. but, but don't you think, though, Gigi, that a lot of the options are being closed to her now because of first, first uh, Noy Noy Aquino surge? Um, if the surveys are right, he's probably going to win this election. Then, of course, there is uh, the, the, the sort of the preemptive sort of fears that have been raised that she may try to stay in office because of that Supreme Court issue and other little things that have happened that have made people suspicious. Do you not think that uh, her options have been narrowing now? Um, if Gloria is not thinking of extending her stay in power, I think she, she, she's just relishing the, the thought of telling all these people that she's not a lame duck mm -hmm. president, that up to June 30 they would have to take her seriously. And that's as far as it goes, you think? Um, as I said, um, Gloria is capable of pulling surprises. Such as? <laughs> Perhaps let's go into the elections on Monday. Yes. There are some who have uh, said that there's only a 25% chance of, of the automation succeeding. So, and there are, no one is yet ready to say that, there, that this was planned, there was some conspiracy. But what do you think? What do you see based on the actuations of, of, uh, of President Arroyo and the people around her? Um, first, um, if the machines that are not working, Comelec has contingency, um, they have layers of contingencies on, that they can eventually go manual and all. Uh, so, and our problem is we don't have a legal definition of what a failure of election is. So I think that, um, that as tradition goes, as far as some as voter, as far as as soon as voters can, you know, cast their votes, you cannot say that there was a failure of election just because the machines didn't work, and we don't have like a threshold of a certain turnout before we can say that it's a failure or not. Okay, Gigi, uh, as you said, uh, a lot of what's going, on, what's happened has not been a surprise for you. Uh, if, uh, if you look at the way that, that uh, these people have, have, if you look behind the scenes, then, then a lot of what has happened could have been predicted. Mm. I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. We've got <laughs> three days to go before the election. What do you think is going to happen? Um, I think that there will be a um, massive disenfranchisement of voters. Not really because of the, the glitches in the machines, because that could be remedied by certain per persons going manual. But it's really about voters not being familiar with the process, what they're supposed to do when they go to the precinct and fill up their ballots. Mm -hmm. And that massive disenfranchisement enough to, to um, surprise us about the outcome of the election? Yes, I think. So are you at this point prepared to call the election? <laughs> what? No? Um, there will be elections, definitely. It's just that the, out, the surprises, well, if you will call them surprises, is the disenfranchisement of a lot of voters and then um, the, the capability probably of some candidates or organization to still, to, to, to still court the soft support from other candidates. Is there anything that can be done at this late stage to prevent 
uh, your expected disenfranchisement of voters? Um, it's really about Comelex um, admitting where they where they can deliver and deliver and where they cannot, and just saying this early that we will go manual in these specific places. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we've got a couple of days to go, so let's all cross our fingers. Gigi Go of Newsbreak, thank you very much for joining us tonight, man. And up next, the Senorosa Commission reports up to 72 private armed groups could disrupt the poll. The details on that when we return. This is The Rundown. Welcome back. We have this news just in. The Comelec Unbank has just declared the Liberal Party as the dominant minority party. This means that the LP will have access to the sixth copy of election returns and the Comelec server, allowing them to check the results and monitor the votes. The Commission on Elections has granted ABS-CBN's petition for the 21st copy of the election returns. This will allow the network to counter-check the accuracy of the vote count as it conducts its own unofficial parallel count in partnership with the Parish Pastoral Council for Responsible Voting and the KBP. ABS-CBN is ANC's parent company. With just three days to go before the polls, the Senorosa Commission warns that up to 72 armed groups or private armies could pose a threat to the elections. The commission, which was put up by Malacanang in the wake of the Maguindanao massacre, says that most of the groups are in the autonomous regions in Muslim Mindanao. The commission says it has so far abolished some 38 armed groups since it was created. Meanwhile, international rights group Amnesty International is calling on candidates to commit to abolishing their private armies. The groups are believed responsible for a number of election-related attacks. However, the Philippine National Police says they are ready to act in case these armed groups threaten the polls. PNP and uh, the uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines are presently uh, securing all the uh, polling centers uh, in the Philippines mm -hmm. through our security assistance desks. And uh, this number is about 36,000 uh, uh, plus all over the Philippines. And okay. uh, a minimum of two personnel will be uh, stationed there from the PNP, mm -hmm. plus all the components of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Since uh, January 10, we were able to arrest uh, 106 uh, members of uh, these partisan armed groups mm -hmm. with 111 firearms confiscated involving 33 uh, private armies. Okay. Now, we, we couldn't say uh, whether these, uh, these uh, PAGs are delisted, mm -hmm. but uh, we could safely say that uh, we have uh, checked mm -hmm. their uh, movements. And uh, as of now, we are reckoning with about 74 okay. private armed groups from the original 107, mm -hmm. which uh, we... A 55 million peso fund will be distributed to the families of 57 victims of the Maguindanao massacre. 50 million will be donated by the Federation of Philippine Industries, while 5 million will come from the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office. The Department of Justice is tasked to distribute the cash. The DOJ says it will begin by distributing 50,000 pesos to each family's, each victim's family by next week. The money is expected to be used for education, livelihood, and medical assistance. Lawyer Nana Santos, who represents some of the relatives of the victims, say the families, including the Magundadatu family, are grateful for the assistance. President Arroyo has received the Judicial and Bar Council shortlist of nominees for Supreme Court Chief Justice. Various sectors and political personalities have been saying a constitutional ban prevents the President from appointing Chief Justice Reynato Puno's successor. But the Supreme Court made a ruling allowing the President to pick Puno's replacement. Defense and milita military officials are, are again denying rumors that they're out to conduct massive fraud in the election. Defense Secretary Roberto Gonzalez and Armed Forces Chief Delphine Bangit say there's no truth to text messages circulating that they will rig the, the polls in favor of Nationalista Party standard bearer Manny Villar. Bangit also assured the public that the Armed Forces would protect the people's votes and respect the outcome of Monday's election. And tonight we're joined in the studio by former Comile Commissioner Mehol Sadain to share with us his insights and perspectives on poll automation and other e issues. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening. Well, first of all, what's your assessment so far 
uh, based on the reports you've been hearing from the Comelec and Smartmatic? Uh, 